As a kid, I played Dead Space a few years after its initial release in 2008. I loved the game, and I played the other two releases when they came out as well. This nostalgia and the upcoming promise of the Callisto Protocol led me to be extremely skeptical about the Dead Space remake that was on its way. I didn't think they could do the game justice. I thought, there's just no way they'll stay faithful. No way that the game won't be filled with microtransactions like Dead Space 3, and there's no way it will be better than Callisto. Now, while it wasn't hard to be better than Callisto, the remake is absolutely amazing. It improves old outdated mechanics, but stays faithful to the original. Its story is stronger, and the gameplay gives me a deep, nostalgic feeling. Finishing the game once wasn't enough. The new impossible mode was calling my name, and the locked achievements were triggering my OCD. I needed every achievement. A journey begins on the Ishimura like normal, except the game is cranked to impossible difficulty, which has the same difficulty and damage values as hard, but you can't die a single time or you must restart the run over again. Yes, I'll be getting most of the non-difficulty related achievements on impossible, which makes this basically a 100% run where I only have one life. The stakes are high. We land on the Ishimura, Ken learns how Swiss cheese is made, and we pick up our first gun. This will also be our only gun, as there is an achievement to only use the plasma cutter. And it's also really, really strong. And since we were in impossible mode, I felt it was better to focus on putting all our upgrade nodes into our suit and one single gun. We play through the game as normal, completing the first chapter by repairing the tram car and all the other nonsense the characters are freaking out about. And unlock our first achievement, welcome aboard. Apparently I'd already dismembered 50 limbs for the maximum achievement, I just didn't realise because I'm stupid and had my steam overlay disabled, so I didn't actually get a pop up for the first few achievements. We've already got stasis by chapter 2 and we pick up kinesis right as it starts, although there's no achievement for either of these. Our next achievement is called wishbone, awarded by damaging a limb but not ripping it off, then using kinesis to rip the limb off rather than shooting it. But there's a cheeky way to trick the game with this achievement, and on this channel we like glitches, exploits and bugs. That's why you can see me zoom around at high speed during this whole video. It's a setting by the way. Turn aim down sights to toggle, then just hold your sprint button while aiming down sights, and you run faster than normal. So back to the achievement, in the medical level, there's these spacesuits hanging up on the wall. If you kinesis the leg and throw it, the game counts it as a ripped off limb and the achievement pops. Moving on through medical, we can use any sort of pipe-like projectile to pin an enemy to the wall with as much respect and love as you do when pinning an overdue bill to your notice board. The next achievement is Lab Rat for completing Chapter 2, and shortly after that we use Stasis on enemies 50 times for freeze, then complete Chapter 3 for all systems go. The next achievement, Brute Force, requires us to kill a brute. If you know what a brute is, you're probably thinking that these are the scariest enemies for a no death impossible run. But if you Stasis them immediately and run behind them, you can actually decimate these enemies. After rerouting some power, we arrive at the ADS cannon section, where we have to fly out and manually target some rocks for a while. On our way back in, we complete chapter 4 for cannon fodder. Nothing happens in chapter 5, but shortly into chapter 6, we're rewarded for picking up 75 whole law logs. Wow, what a treat. I don't like reading, if you can't tell. And just in case you did doubt I cut off 50 limbs, here we get the 500 limbs cut off achievement. I was so chuffed with myself, I nearly threw the entire deathless run by walking into the fire like a WoW Classic player. Also during chapter 6, I actually forgot about the achievement to stomp 10 enemies into jam, and while fighting the budget popcorn form from Halo, I stomped enough to pop the backbreaker achievement. I was dreading the first boss fights for this run, I hadn't planned anything. The butthole wall was first on the list, and I'd like to tell you about a long and arduous battle. But really, as long as you strafe during like any animation the boss has, and you shoot the glowy bits, that's it. Yeah, the second phase has a timer, but it's really not a big deal. Upon defeating the flesh glory holes, we're awarded with Exterminator. Upon entering back inside, Chapter 6 concludes, and another achievement is in the bag. Chapter 7 has a lot of going up and down elevators, backtracking, an unkillable enemy, ooh, very scary, and a big old rock. Chapter 8 has a lot more juice involved. In this chapter, a military ship has received the SOS beacon from the last chapter and they're on their way for rescue. So we basically have to prepare to be rescued by cleaning up the Ishii and setting out the good wine and cheese. We get another boss fight, yay! The butthole wall from earlier is kind of like a butthole roof now. Either way, the boss is more or less the same, it still tries to smack you with its dingleberries and flail its arms about and all that good stuff. Look, if you couldn't tell by now, my experience with the combat in this game led me to conclude that it's not really that hard. 
Most of these old style horror games just come down to a lot of kiting. If you can read the telegraph correctly, there's really no challenge. Shoot three weak spots and the butthole is flushed away for good. The military ship from earlier thought it'd be too easy of a game if they rescued us this early. And thus, decided it was best if they let the one single alien they picked up on their ship that they could clearly see was not human before letting the alien out, kill them all. <laughs> so stupid. Their ship crashes into us, allowing us to board it and scrap it for parts. All jokes aside though, this is probably my favorite chapter in the whole game. I enjoy the level design and the enemy variety. The constant and pure chaos is exciting and witnessing the destruction of a highly trained military ship that was carrying a nuke is thrilling. There's a sneaky little achievement in here that is actually missable. About halfway through the ship, we discover a little shooting course, practice for the soldiers. But when you start the course, enemies quickly appear. It's short, but intense. And if you survive, you get an achievement. Continuing on, we disable the warhead, acquire the singularity call, then we GG the f Baba boy. out with our next achievement. Continuing on, we pick up Z Baller to tick another one off the list. It's not that interesting. You just kinesis a ball into these holes over and over. The shooting gallery is honestly more interesting. Now is as good as time as any, apparently, because I backtracked to complete Nicole's side quest. Yeah, easy money. Chapter 10 involves installing the part we got off the military ship and onto a little escape ship, then cooking the regenerating enemy, and not much else really. The story is starting to wrap up now. See ya. Up next, we need to move the giant red multi schlong dildo around a loading bay while defending waves of enemies. But if you look around the elevator you ride right as you enter the kink dungeon, you can find Pang in this locker. I'm sure there's a reference or something involved with this fella, but who cares? At some point afterwards, we pick up the 150th lore note for the final lore note related achievement and finish off the final side quest that I'm doing for this playthrough. There is one I'm leaving for my next playthrough. With one last chapter left, we arrive at the heart of the alien dildos. Finish chapter 11 and begin the final push of this playthrough. The rest of the playthrough plays out like a standard impossible mode run. There's lots of interacting with your computer screens, waiting around, and so much downtime, it's nearly impossible to resist the temptation of the Great Shaft. Pushing through, the final boss is all that stands in the way. And boy, if you thought the marker was phallic. It's a pretty standard fight, although the boss picks you up at the end and you have to kill one final weak spot before he eats you. And I gotta say, after I missed the first few shots, my heart was pumping so hard if I miss shot here, I would have to start the whole playthrough again. But it's cool, I shot him. This finished the game and unlocked five achievements all at once. Mindless Prey for killing the boss, Exodus for completing chapter 12, set a benchmark for beating the game on normal or higher, one gun for only using the plasma cutter, and Untouchable for beating the game on impossible difficulty. Done with the playthrough, but not all the achievements, we're going to dive straight into the second go around without wasting any of your time. Chuck the game on story difficulty and new game plus. And as soon as we gain control of Isaac, our inventory from the last game is put into our storage, thus unlocking the achievement pack rat in the process. Full arsenal is awarded for picking up every gun in the game. Next, I set up to get 30 kills of all the other guns in the game. Each gun besides the plasma cutter has one achievement tied to it. Auto fire, live with the hot ones, a cut above, pusher, eviscerator, and full contact. Completing the side quest I missed last playthrough awarded full clearance. Collecting all the weapon upgrades unlocks built to order. Maxing out all of our weapon skill trees gives us maxed out. Picking up all schematics, so things like med kits and stasis juice awards merchant. And in New Game Plus there are these 12 micro penises to pick up. An achievement is awarded for the first one you pick up. And if you pick them all up, then set them up in the captain's quarters, then finish the game again, you get reunion. Plus Contractor for finishing the game in New Game Plus. Plus an alternate ending where Isaac believes Nicole is still alive and turns into the bad guy. I mean, I knew Isaac was a simp, but surely not a big enough simp to keep making poor judgement calls for an entire trilogy of video games. Isaac, thank you for coming. Like I had a choice. Isaac, you made it. Thank God. Ellie! It's no good! It's moving too fast! Isaac! Hey, baby.